here. I am so glad you joined me today, girlfriend. This is my Q&A day. Before we get started, I want to thank all of the new people that have come to my channel. Thank you so much. And for those of you that are new today and have not subscribed to my channel, I invite you to scroll on down and hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, click on the bell. It'll just notify you of my upcoming videos. Generally, I feel twice. I film <laughs> twice a week, sometimes three. We have got questions on skincare. We have got questions on someone that just dates millionaires and needs information. I mean, we're talking about any kind of complexion problem. We have got, we're loaded girls, okay? Let's start with our first gal right now. And I didn't ask for names on this. Some have names, some do not. This is from Marsha. She says, Sharon, which do I use first and which do I use to seal? Oils or moisturizers? First of all, I have done it both ways, and I know a lot of people that have done it both ways. The norm, let's say, is that the moisturizers hold in every single thing. But this is the deal. Sometimes I just put oils on at the end, let's say if I'm working on my neck and decollete or something like that and I'm sealing with my cacao oil, well then I don't need the moisturizer on top of the oil at all or vice versa. I've got the oil doing its thing. So it depends on what you're doing is how, what you want to seal first. But the moisturizer will seal in the oil. But understand now, really listen to me on this. Even if you use the moisturizer to seal everything in, the oil is not going to penetrate deeper than the surface of your skin. You do realize that. Because it's not a medical grade product. So it sits on the barrier. Of course, that's where I like my oils is on the barrier. The only one that can go deeper into the skin would be marula oil because the molecules are small. It's kind of up to you what you want to do, girlfriend, okay? Number two. Sharon, my name is Candace. I am now in my 30s. I have been dating very rich men, millionaires to be exact, since I was 28 years old and after I got out of college I got a job and then I was turned on to by men that have money and yachts and they travel all over the world. This was appealing to me and so I got into strictly dating millionaires. I now want to marry the millionaire that I have been with for some time but there is a problem. He is married at the present time. He even has grown children. So what do you suggest I do? I've heard of a lot of younger women that are out dating millionaires. There's even a site where you can date and find millionaires, a dating site. And I get that, okay? There's even a YouTuber, okay, that dates millionaires and she teaches classes on this. But just whoa, 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 Let, let's, let's get down. Let's get down to the facts, okay? If he were just a millionaire and not married, I wouldn't care what you did, okay? Because that's your thing. I mean, enjoy the lifestyle, whatever you want to do. I'm not here to judge you. However, he has a wife. That presents a whole new problem, okay? And he's dating a much, much younger person. So this isn't fair to his wife. And I don't know what the kids are going to say because they're about your age or maybe even older than you right now. This is not kosher. So I'm telling you, I would rather you find someone that is not married. I promise you, I promise you, he is not going to divorce that wife after all of these years. And the children are this, about the same age as you are to marry you. He will keep you up. He will pay for an apartment. He will come and go. He might tra take you on, you know, lavish trips like he does already. All these wonderful things. But I do not see him divorcing his wife to marry you. I don't see that at all. And you know what? I think he would be stupid if he did that. Because guess what? He wouldn't be a millionaire anymore. You know why? She's going to take 
half of everything. And if she's smart, she'll take more than half. And at his age, he can't afford to lose that. He's worked too hard all these years building his empire. Do you really think, do you really think when he's got everything for free and it's easy with you right now that he is really going to give up everything he's got? No, right now he's got his cake and eat it too. This man is selfish. This man has, has got just what he wants and he's giving you just what you want. If you're going to stay in this particular lifestyle, then I would encourage you just to do what you're doing now. And you already said that he has you in a very nice, posh, you know, condo. And he bought you a car. He takes you on trips. He pays for everything. So, I mean, that, you know, I'm thinking here as a woman, hmm. And if I were young, that would be a bad deal because, no, but that's all you're going to get. Because he is not going to divorce her. Now, if you're interested in getting married now, you need to come out of the game. And out of the game means get your mind off, you know, just dating the millionaires. Now, I'm not saying you will never meet a millionaire while you're out there because there are tons of them out there and that are single and, and looking, you know, for mates and spouses and what have you. And that's great. You need to go work your jelly then. But don't do it on his nickel, of course. I mean, right now, you all have an understanding. you got to make up your mind if you want to stick with this gig or if you want to get out of it. Okay? Of course, you know what I would tell you if you consulted with me. I'd tell you to get out of this because this is a married man. And I don't care what lifestyle it is. If a man is married, don't hone in on some other woman's territory. There's a girl code, okay? And we don't play that. And I think that is the tackiest thing a woman could do, is to go after somebody else's man. I'm sorry, I think it's disgusting. It just makes me sick to my stomach. And the same thing goes with men. They need to leave other women alone that are already married. This is, but girl code, whoa, 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 girlfriend. Uh-uh. If his wife ever found out about this, or his kids... You'd be chopped liver. Do you understand? Mm -mm. Get on or off the pot, and I'm going to ask you to leave this scene now because you're in your mid-30s. You know, you're not that young 20-year-old playing this game anymore. And go ahead. I know you, you said you had plenty of savings and all this. Find something to do with your life, a career, a business, and, and go date and find someone that really wants to marry you and not just keep you up, okay? Keep me posted. I really want to know what you're going to do here. Dear Sharon, I need some help with my under eyes. I know you've asked, answered questions like this before, but I swear I cannot remember. Call me old if you will. <laughs> what, what do I do about the crepiness and lines? Okay. She said, I remember you mentioned a couple of products. Yes, I did. And they can smooth and exfoliate as well. Oh, okay. All right, first of all, let's talk about under eye crepiness and lines. Okay, we're gonna go through this one more time. And I don't mind, trust me, I don't mind. Let's talk about the regular eye creams on a regular basis. The day eye cream, morning, morning eye cream, is the Revision DEJ eye cream. And you put it on your lids and all around your crow's feet and under your eyes as well. Okay? It's the best cream I have found for crepiness. Now, at night, I use the TNS Eye Repair. And it does have growth factors in it and it's got peptides and we can go on down the line. It's powerful, powerful eye cream. And it just it needs a tiny, tiny bit, just like the revision is. Uh, just a teeny tiny bit that you rub between two fingers, warm it up, and put on so it doesn't take much. You know, even though these prices are, are higher because they are medical grade, you use such a teeny tiny bit. My revision lasts eight months. Eight months, okay? And the TNS repair lasts about six. And then with the TNS, you don't put it on the lids. You put it around the orbital bone as such and the crow's feet and under. That is your maintenance for taking care of it. Now, let's talk a bit about a little exfoliation. No, 
Do not put Retin-A under your eyes and no, don't just get any type of retinol. I will list down below a product that I try. I love it. I recommend it to you guys for exfoliation of the eyes. It's very gentle. It's wonderful. And it's by this wonderful esthetician to the stars. Her name is Renee Rallo. And she actually, her home base is Dallas. And she has three uh, spas in Texas. She is off the charts a miracle worker with things like this. So she has a whole line of her products. Like I said, she caters to only the big stars. But she has this exfoliating product for under the eyes, this retinol product that is so gentle, so fabulous. It is already helping. I'm using it a lot under my eyes and I recommend it to you too. I will have that product listed down below. That is all you need to do. Let's not get crazy with it. Let's not I dry your eyes out. You know, we, we just don't want to do things like that create more problems. But this will help you. Trust me. It's going to cure it, girlfriend, okay? Thanks for your question, sweetheart. Sharon, what is the best treatment for the neck area? The best thing that I use on my neck, and I use it you know, on my non-retin-A nights, is Kakai Oil. I love cacai oil for the neck and the decollete. That has helped me so much remove lines. It's helped me remove wrinkles. But most of all, it's helped with the texture. You know, your skin's all crepey and crummy like it is all over your body when you get older. This has helped. Kakai has been my blessing. Trust me. Now, I've had a lot of you ask me, do I use it with my Retin-A? No, I don't use it with my Retin-A at all. I just use, you know, my Kakai oil. And I seal that in. Now, I can put Retin-A on my face and then Kakai here and down. Yes. But do I mix them together? No, I do not. All right. But Kakai oil is the, is the best of the best of the best for that neck area. Now, I also have tried another product that I mix with Kakai sometimes. And it's the Naya 24, it's N-I-A 24, and it's for neck and hand. I sometimes mix it together. I'll, I'll use that all over my neck, the cream, and my chest. Then, you know, I wait till it sinks in. I usually wait 10 to 15 minutes. Then I take the cacao oil and put that on top and seal it. Either way, it's working, you know, without, with or without the cream. Try it. If you have it, it is the answer to your prayers. Now, uh, a lot of you, when I have my Retin-A nights, I do take my Retin-A uh, down my neck, you know, and some on my uh, decollete as well. But I've been doing that for a long time. So be careful when you try that the first time around because it may not, you know, be right for you. It may cause a reaction. Just be careful. Now, the next question I have says, Dear Sharon, if you change products often, how do you know which products work for you? Easy. The products I try are for a very long time. When I try products, I try products for six months or over. Definitely four months will tell me if that product is working for me usually because I know my skin and I know how it's going to react. So if that's working, I keep it up. All right, if I try something else, it's usually for a different area. I pretty much stick with what I know is going to work for me. I stick with my vitamin C that I know is going to work. I stick with my particular hyaluronic acid. You know, I stick with my growth factors. Anything else topical, I can get wherever I want. It can be Korean, it can be drugstore, or whatever, you know, for topical stuff. But I know which eye creams work for me. I'll try different ones to see, but I have to stop using... Like, if I were to try a different eye cream, for instance, instead of Revision in the daytime, I would stop using Revision completely and then try this new product for about four months and see if it has the same effect as Revision. That's how I do things. All right? 
So that's the answer to your question that I have, okay? But that's how you will know. You generally know your skin and you know what your skin is going to react to. And you know the products you have tried, the reaction you've gotten then. So when you try something new, it's easy to figure out if it's working or not. Piece of cake, or friends. The next question, Sharon. Should you use retinol around the eye area? Okay. No, if you're talking about pure retinol, like you would get, you know, from a med spa or anything else, not drugstore, because that's, if you find any retinol in those products, it's so minor, it's not going to do anything anyway. You th you're going to think it does because it's cheaper and that turns you on, but it doesn't. It doesn't do squat. Now, real retinol, I would stay away from retinase and retinols unless... The retinol is made for the eye. Keep that in mind. If it's made for the eye, then yes. Like I just mentioned earlier about Rene Rouleau had a product where it exfoliates under your eyes. It's like a retinol that exfoliates. Then yes, that would be okay because it's for the eye. But just don't pick up any retinol and start using it under your eyes. No, no, no. I bet I've seen over a hundred cases just this last year where everybody is using this stuff and sending me horror pictures and calling me and everything. What they've done to their eyes because some of the YouTubers say, yeah, it's, it's fine to use under your eyes. I say no unless your doctor says yes. And the next thing is, Use a product that doctors know that is going to be mild. They'll tell you what to use under your eyes. I can tell you that. My doctors say stick with exactly what I'm doing. They told me what to use from the very beginning anyway. And then when I exfoliate with Rene Roulette, they know it's not too over the chart strong that I'm going to fry. And it's just going to lightly exfoliate under my eyes. And I do that once a week. You see, and there's a way to do it and do it right. But other than that, I keep that crap away from my eyes, honey. Mm-hmm. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Now that will mess up your skin profusely. And this YouTuber's going to take, go to your doctor. Talk to your doctor first, okay? Next question we have. I have been having this problem for some time. My foundation and concealer, etc., tend to curdle, then roll off, if you know what I mean. I have changed makeup. I have changed serums. I have changed moisturizers. I have changed the way I apply my skincare, more or less, waiting longer to apply each layer. The only way to avoid it is to wear no makeup. That is not going to happen. My skin looks great, but the barnacles, broken vessels, etc., show. I don't know what to do. I hope you can help. You're such a hoot. I love that. At the same time, you know what you're talking about. We all appreciate you. Thanks for being you. I have found nine out of ten times the reason this happens, and you didn't mention a primer, okay? I am huge on primers. Now, read my lips here. I choose to use a silicone primer. I use the Smashbox silicone primer. I love it. It's the most fantastic primer in the universe. You know why? Because I have pores in my nose, and it fills in all the pores and the fine lines before I put on my foundation. I get the smoothest coverage in the universe, and I use a damp beauty blender or damp sponge. Guarantee it. And I have tried a million, okay, primers. This is the one that I love. I don't care what kind of primer you're using. Don't use anything oil, though, if you're having this issue. Use a good matte fill-in type primer. Try the silicone if you want. It's fabulous. There's not enough silicone to hurt you, so don't panic about that because you know I check ingredients. So, yes, try that. It's the most fabulous primer in the universe. All right, then you wait. Okay, once you put on a primer, I wait 10 minutes before I start with my foundation. Then you put on your foundation with a damp beauty blender, damp sponge, because it'll give you a lighter coating, if you will, a lighter step where you're not putting on real heavy stuff. Brush is going to put on heavier coverage. Let's try a damp beauty blender. Then I'd wait a couple of minutes after that, maybe three minutes, before you go into the next step. You keep repeating 
all, all of your steps that you're doing, by the way. All right, now, I would stay away from oil-based products, head more into the drying type products. In other words, I would like to see you not use any cream eyeshadows right now. I don't want you to use cream contouring. Let's talk about powder type and, you know, contact me and I can give you ideas on the different powders. But um, once you are done, you want to set even under your eyes, okay, and your face. Now, I am huge on the idea of being careful with powders because as we get older, powders can make you look old as Methuselah and sit in your lines and it's a big bloody mess. Okay, but I found powders that don't do that. Now, let's talk about under the eyes, getting that to set. Try the Hourglass um, Ethereal, you know, in a compact form. Love it. Take my damp beauty blender at the end, the pointed end. I rub it in the ethereal. I mash it on my hand just to make sure I don't have a lot on there because you really can't see that much. And then press, press, press under the eyes. Okay? That's all you need to set your eyes. Or use the By Terry Hydra Hyaluronic Powder. It's fabulous uber 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 finally melt do the same routine damn beauty blender get a little on the tip rub it in your hand where you're pressing it into the sponge and not applying it to your face and then press 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 leave it alone you're set with the rest of your face take and this is the best powder i have found this is me personally and i've tried them all for the face I use the Hourglass Veil Powder. Oh my gosh. The Holy Grail of the Holy Grail Powders. Let me tell you, girlfriends. I do take my damp beauty blender at one end. I do the same thing. I match it on my hand. And then lightly, I, I just press like this lightly. Lightly, all in my T-zone, down around my nose. Anywhere where you seem to be slot of makeup sliding off of you, then that settles that. Then wait about 15 minutes. Use your uh, Urban Decay All Nighter Setting Spray. Spray that little booger, okay? And that's great. Now I want you to try that first and see how that works. If you are still sliding all over the place. I want you, with every step you take, like if before you put on your foundation, after you have your primer on and you've let your primer sit, take the um, Urban Decay and spray a layer of the setting spray and wait before you put on your makeup. After your makeup has set a while, spray it again before you put on your blushes and your, you know, your powders and blah, blah, blah. Try using the setting spray in between if this other doesn't work first. Keep me posted and let me know, though, okay? All right. Good luck, girlfriend. I know you've been suffering, sweet cheeks. Okay, ladies, we have one more question. You had mentioned sunflower, sunflower oil many times. I know you love that, and you use that under your eyes. Does it exfoliate or does it hydrate? Oh, no, honey. All right, under the eyes, the sunflower oil is great for fine lines and wrinkles. I use that too, one, sometimes two, you know, nights a week, during the week, under my eyes as well. Sometimes I mix that medical grade eye cream with it. It's wonderful helping with the fine lines and the wrinkles. That's another really good one. Uh, it does not exfoliate because it is an oil. It is a gentle oil, a hydrating oil. It is fabulous. And another thing, I am also just now starting to use that on my neck and decollete to see if it has the same effect as the cacao oil or not. So, keep your fingers crossed and I'll keep you posted on that, okay? All right, my ladies. Thank you so much for joining me today, and thank you for your questions. They were all exciting. For those of you that ever have any questions you want to ask me, I have my email address listed down below. Just send over all your questions. I'll be more than happy to answer them in my Q&As. I get tons, and I love answering your questions. 
to all of those new subbies that have joined my tribe. Mwah, 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 mwah. Thank you girls so much. I love each and every one of you to pieces. And to each and every one of all of my subscribers, I want you to stay sassy, classy, confident, and give me a big thumbs up on this Q&A.